distance from the center of rotation to the position of the centrifuge tube, right? And, uh, and it, uh, it is actually the radius of rotation which is measured in centimeters, right? So uh, you don't have to measure it because of course, you, uh, when you have a centrifuge machine, you have the R value given as well. So this is the formula, it, it looks a bit complicated, uh, but again, uh, due to the advancements in techniques, uh, now nowadays you don't have to worry about this as well because both values, both uh, uh, both values are given in one centrifuge machine. So if you uh, if you know the value of G and you want to convert it into RPM, you can easily do so. And and if you want to um, uh, if you if you have RPM and you want to convert it into G value, again you can be able to do so in your, it, it, it automatically calculates, so you don't have to worry. But if you don't have this uh, facility in your centrifuge machine and you have G value, you want to convert it to RPM, then you can always do it by applying this formula. All you need is the R value. Okay, so uh, this is the theory part. <coughs> When you try to understand what is happening inside the centrifuge machine, you just have to imagine that there is a molecule, a particle, having certain mass, right? M, small m. This is the mass of the particle. The, there are certain forces, because it is a centrifuge, uh, everything is going on in the centrifuge machine is actually the sedimentation. So sedimentation of the particles uh, in a gravitational field. So you have a particle with a uh, certain mass and it has, uh, uh, it, it will come across certain, uh, certain forces, right? And these forces are listed here. And what are these forces? One is the uh, sedimenting force, right? Sedimenting force is the, should be directly proportional to the mass of the particle, right? And uh, it will, it, you, you can see the arrow, the arrow is directing towards bottom and the, uh, the um, there are some other arrows as well. Uh, for example, this one and this one, with these three forces, the, 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 the directing forces and one force is uh, positioned downwards while the rest of the two are upwards. What does that mean? Because your centrifuge, uh, the particle in your centrifuge machine tend to move downwards. So what can you infer from this uh, observation is that your, uh, this force, the FS force, is actually uh, directly proportional to the movement of your particle. Right? The rest of the two is in the opposite direction. So if these two forces would be high, it, the, it will prevent the molecule from coming down. Right? And if this force is high, then it will, it will make the particle to move downwards. Okay? So what are these uh, uh, values, uh, the terminologies, uh, the uh, M is actually the mass of the particle, R, if you already know what is this, distance from the center of rotation, uh, this is omega is actually the angular velocity. And if you remember, the um, formula F is equal to MA, right? So F is directly proportional to the mass and the acceleration. And here acceleration is uh, actually replaced because it is the uh, in the circular direction, circular uh, motion, then you can say that it is angular velocity. So it is uh, omega squared. Uh, this one is the specific partial specific volume. What is this? This is related to the particle. This characteristic is related to the particle uh, and, 
and rho is actually the density. So the density, this density is of the solvent but this one is actually the density or the um, volume that uh, the, uh, the particle occupies, right? Uh, it is given by this mu, uh, right? And F is the frictional coefficient. So we will discuss each of these one by one. Uh, just to give you a brief account of all these, uh, rho is actually the solvent characteristic. The, um, not the particle. There are two things in your system. One is your particle and the other is the solvent. So density, this, this density, rho is actually the density of the solvent. But the other two are the characteristics of your, of your, of your particle. Okay? One is the partial specific volume which is again given by 1 over uh, rho density. And yes, and the frictional coefficient is actually the property of the shape because uh, the shape uh, can be elongated, the shape can be round, compact, right? And this again will uh, either help the molecule to come down or will resist the movement of your particle. So the elongated particle will not come down easily, but the compact, small compact particle will come down easily. So that is uh, related to the shape of the particle and it, it will uh, cause friction. So it means that it should be inversely proportional to the, to the movement of the particle, frictional coefficient. So these are certain values, the frictional coefficient, uh, the frictional force, which is again in opposite direction, and the, there is another one which is called buoyant force, Fp. And what is the buoyant force? It is actually the, the, um, the force which is uh, caused by, this is your particle, this is your solvent, right? So when the particle moves, it displaces a certain solvent and occupies that space. For instance, it will come here. So uh, the, uh, in the initial state, it is occupied by the solvent. Now it will come down and the water molecules will be displaced or solvent molecules will be displaced. So the force that requires this is called the buoyant force. And again, this is also uh, uh, inversely proportional. So there are two forces which are inversely proportional and one is directly proportional. And um, these are the simple terminologies. And we have the velocity. It is constant velocity, which is u. Okay. So again, we have we come to the definitions. Fs is the sedimentary force which is proportional to the mass of the particle and that of the acceleration. Simple F is equal to mA or omega square m. Okay. Buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. I just told you about it. And the frictional force uh, because the particles move through a fluid which is this, this is experiences a frictional drag which is proportional to the velocity, the particle will experience a frictional force. So this frictional force depends upon the shape of the particle. If the particle is compact, it will not feel that much force and uh, the, um, uh, or, or the resistance or the friction to move. But if, if it is compact, it will, uh, it will, uh, um, it is, uh, it will um, experience that force, the frictional force, that's why uh, it depends upon the shape. So whenever it comes to friction, uh, frictional force or friction, it is the characteristics of your particle and it will uh, cause the movement to uh, restrict. Uh, or uh, in other words, you can say it is inversely proportional. That buoyant force is also inversely proportional and the sedimentary force is the only force which will cause the uh, uh, particle to move towards bottom. So, uh, 
we can come to a few conclusions or few concluding remarks that if the density of the particle is greater than that of the solvent, the particles will bring in to sediment. If the particle have higher density, and what is the density? No, the density is given by this, right? It is mu d to the polar, v polar, v bar. This is related to the density of the particle. Okay? Partial specific volume is actually the density of the particle. Okay? And this one is actually the density of the solvent. The lower is the density of the solvent and the V bar is actually the uh, density of the particle. So if the density of the particle is more, it will come down easily uh, uh, as compared to the density is compared to that, that of the solvent. If the density is uh, less, then it will tend to float. Okay? This is a simple rule, right? Uh, similarly, if the mass of the particle is high, is, la is, uh, uh, is uh, more the, um, than the solvent, not the solvent, if the, uh, then, then the other uh, molecules or particles present in your suspension, then the, the particles having more size will tend to sediment earlier than that has to be light levels. Okay? Friction coefficient depends on the shape of the particle. The bulky, elongated, bulky uh, or elongated particles experience more frictional drag than the compact and smooth spherical particles. So these are the things which you should keep in your mind while you uh, uh, try to understand which particle would come, uh, 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 separate, separate, how the uh, particles will separate during the experiment. So sedimentation can be uh, expressed in terms of velocity per unit field and uh, this is the formula here. Anyway, this is your formula. Velocity of the particle is equal to the mass or you can say it is directly proportional to the mass, uh, the omega square, uh, the R value and the 1 minus V bar, uh, 1 minus uh, V bar rho and it is inversely proportional to the frictional coefficient. So sedimentation is given in this uh, by, uh, by this formula. So you simply put this formula in here. So what Okay, 
सिंपली इसको आपके नीचे ले गए और फिर ये चीज आपकी specific volume, density of the solvent, and angular velocity. So there are certain units, right? That mass should be given in grams. If it is in grams, then the partial specific volume will be in ml, or density in gram per ml because it, it is gram and it is ml, and angular velocity is radians per second. Okay, if it is change, then S is the velocity of the particle per unit gravitational acceleration and it is also called as sedimentation coefficient. equation what does this equation tell you? There is mass, there is B bar, there is rho, and there is F. You can get charge in there. A particle with more mass, molecular mass, will move faster. Sediment faster. So sedimentation kya hogi? Uski value kya hogi? Sada hogi kam hoga. So time hai na, for example, ek cheese heavy hai, wo paanch minute mein aare liya. Dousri cheese lighter hai, wo dus minute mein aare liya. So S ki value zyada hogi ki kam? Time ka kya relation hai, sedimentation coefficient se? Actually, sedimentation coefficient is the rate, not exactly the time. ठीक है? जब आप time को देखेंगे तो जाहिर है एक चीज जल्दी नहीं चाह रही है तो वो ten seconds में आ रही है, दूसरी बीस second में आ रही है, तो इसका मतलब जो बीस second वाली है, वो बाद में आ रही है, ठीक है? और हम तो कह रहे हैं कि भाई वो जो heavy है वो पहले आएगा, ठीक है? तो time को देखें तो जल्दी वो सेडिमेंट होगा जो कि हैवी होगा ठीक है लेकिन अगर इफ यू इफ यू कोरिलेटेड विद इस सेडिमेंटेशन कोएफिशिएंट उसकी वैल्यू जो है ना वो एक्चुअली द रेट रेट इस फास्टर ठीक है रेट इस फास्टर टाइम इस लेस टाइम डिनोमिनेटर में है ना मैम टाइम डिनोमिनेटर नहीं है टाइम तो ऐसे ही अच्छा अब मोर मैस समझ Sedimentation coefficient is actually the rate. Okay? So higher sedimentation coefficient means higher rate. Okay? So value of sedimentation coefficient ki zyada hogi when it will come earlier, it will, uh, it will take less time and higher rate, higher sedimentation coefficient. Okay? Sedimentation coefficient is actually the rate, okay? So, the jaldi jo particle aa raha hai, heavy particle hai. Heavy particle have the value, high value. Because rate zaata hai uska. Time nahi. Less time, it will take less time to come down. But the particle, the lighter particle, का सेडिमेंटेशन कोएफिशिएंट सेडिमेंटेशन वैल्यू जो होगी वो लो होगी और उसका टाइम ज़्यादा होगा इट विल टेक मोर टाइम टू कम डाउन क्योंकि वो सिंपल सी बात है जो मास की है द रेस्ट ऑफ़ द थिंग इस इस आल्सो इजीअर मास और डेंस पार्टिकल में कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है 
अ डेंसर पार्टिकल मूव फास्टर देन अ लेस डेंसर वन ठीक है बट इफ द सोल्यूशन इज डेंसर दिस पार्टिकल विल मूव स्लोली इफ द सोल्यूशन इज डेंसर देन विदेंसिटी ऑफ द पार्टिकल ठीक है And the greater the frictional coefficient, because because it is in the denominator, the more slowly the particle moves. ठीक है तो friction जहाँ पे भी होगा, particle will move slowly. अच्छा अब कोई मुझे ये बताए कि यहाँ पर आपका जो ये है v bar है, ठीक है ये तो ऊपर है. तो denser particle with small partial specific volume. So these two term terms are रिलेशनशिप हुई ना तो क्या मतलब हुआ क्यों हो रही है तो ऊपर है देखो वन एक नंबर है कोई चीज भी आप वन से माइनस करेंगे तो वो कम होगी ना ठीक है तो इसलिए आप अच्छा मैं आपको ये सब इसलिए बता रही हूँ कि यू नीड टू यू शुड लर्न हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट दी इक्वेशन ठीक है तो इस इस इक्वेशन को देखते हुए नाउ यू कैन एस इज इक्वल टू एम एम इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल Uh, and S is inversely proportional. B bar is again inversely proportional, and the uh, row is also inversely proportional. ठीक है? Because these two are the terms which are uh, subtracted by the number one. समझ आ गई बात? तो इसलिए जाए. अच्छा. अब छोटी सी एक activity कर लेते हैं. Your equation says that m is equal to m one minus v bar rho divided by f. But for example, if you have जो भी 
कंडीशन है वो ये है कि एक्चुअल आपकी आइडियल सिचुएशन है एक्चुअल कंडीशन है कि मास इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द सेजमेंटेशन वैल्यू फ्रिक्शन इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ दी अदर थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो इनवर्सली सो इफ यू हैव टू सेजमेंटेशन वैल्यूज ए एंड बी सो वॉट विल यू से अबाउट द मास अगर आप कोई भी मॉलिकल वेट डाल दें इसका डाल दें एट्टी किलो डेल्टन और इसका डाल दें एट हंड्रेड किलो डेल्टन ठीक है आप बताएं कौन सा वाला एट हंड्रेड किलो डेल्टन एट हंड्रेड किलो डेल्टन बी विल मूव फास्टर एस कंपेयर टू ए ठीक है और किसकी कौन सी वैल्यू हो सकती है तो बी की वैल्यू हंड्रेड होगी और ए की There is a particle with there is a single stranded DNA RNA. स्टैंडर्ड आ रहे हैं और अच्छा कौन कौन से इसमें कंपोनेंट होते हैं आ रहे हैं के अंदर किस चीज पे चार्ज है तो ये क्या होगा नेगेटिव चार्ज फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव सिंगल स्टैंडिंग आर एन ए एंड यू इंट्रोड्यूस सम मॉलिक्यूल विद एन मॉलिक्यूल विद पॉजिटिव चार्ज Or you can say that there are small molecules with positive charge. Okay. So, so what will happen to the sedimentation coefficient before and after the uh, before the before combining this or after high separate before less. ये नेगेटिवली चार्ज, राइट? एंड इफ सेडिमेंटेशन कोएफिशिएंट इज़ से टेन, राइट? सो आफ्टर द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द पॉजिटिव चार्जेस, इट विल टेंड टू टेंड टू चेंज इट्स शेप टू रिलेटिवली मोर कॉम्पैक्ट टेंड द इलोंगेटेड वन so the sedimentation uh, coefficient or the value will increase for example okay so apply up cheese adapt class a condition or experimental condition or so you will be able to single standard or double standard what is the sedimentation is the value मैंने सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड के लिए आ क्यों था? सपोज यू हैव द बॉन्ड्स, ठीक है? तो मोस्ट प्रोबेबली द अच्छा इसमें है आउटसाइड और आपका जो है वो एक स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल है और वी आर कंपेयरिंग सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए एंड डबल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए देयर सेडिमेंटेशन सेलेक्ट इसको पहले कर लेते हैं ठीक है एक और चीज आ गई अच्छा ये क्या करेगा because the negative charges are outside so they tend to bind ठीक है तो होगा क्या कि sedimentation will increase because the size will increase ठीक है अच्छा अगर ये single standard है और ये double standard है simple 
और कोई चीज भी नहीं है एक्स्ट्रा इसके अंदर ठीक है तो ऑफ कोर्स अगर ये कॉम्पैक्ट है तो भी सेम रहेगा अगर ये सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड है तो भी सेम रहेगा ठीक है ना तो कुछ भी नहीं है इसके अंदर तो क्या होगा साइज इसका ज्यादा है तो इसका डबल स्टैंडर्ड विल सेगमेंट फास्टर अगर पार्टिकल में कोई ऐसी चीज ही नहीं है बिल्कुल सेम है उसका अगर उसका इलाकेटेड शेप है या उसका जो है वो कॉम्पैक्ट शेप है दोनों एक ही चीज है तो फिर इतना कोई फर्क नहीं होगा ठीक है लेकिन अगर आप कुछ इंट्रोड्यूस करेंगे सॉल्ट सोल्यूशन डाल दिया उसके अंदर सोडियम क्लोराइड सोल्यूशन है तो आप इस सोडियम के मॉलिक्यूल्स बाइंड कर रहे हैं तब जो है वो चीज इधर साइज विल इंक्रीज और शेप विल चेंज फाइनली देर आर अगेन सम फैक्ट्स द सेडिमेंटेशन क्वेश्चन डिपेंड्स ऑन द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द पार्टिकल molecules with different molecular weights different shapes sizes will move with different velocities in a separate tube whenever you compare theek hai to aapko sari cheeze same rakhni hongi fir aap do particles ko compare kar sakte hain banane ke acha different molecular weights different shapes sizes if they have different sedimentation coefficients or s value and uh, you can uh, determine uh, the s value directly from the rate of the movement uh, or by comparing uh, those of the standard values okay this are different experiments sedimentation sedimentation coefficient is measured in seconds for many substances it lies between uh, 1 into 10 to the power minus 13 to 100 into 10 to the power minus 13 So minus thirteen ten to the power minus thirteen is common. So usually one sweat per minute is defined as ten to the power minus thirteen seconds. So you will not say that it is seconds, but it, because it is coefficient, uh, it has no unit. Okay. So s value is actually the ten uh, hundred to one hundred. Or us me say ten to the power minus thirteen common linear. ठीक है तो नाउ यू नो व्हाट इज एक्चुअली गोइंग ऑन इन द टू द पार्टिकल विद इन दिल्ड वॉट फोर्सेस एक्ट ऑन द पार्टिकल एंड वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स दैट डिटर्मिन देयर मोबिलिटी इन अफ्यूकेशन एक्सपेरिमेंट सो कमिंग टू लिटिल बिट लाइटर मोड नाउ दीज आर सर्टन सम प्रिकॉशंस इन हैजर्ट्स While you do your experiment, lighter but scary. <laughs> Actually, uh, you have to be very careful because it's a very big instrument, and uh, the, uh, you have to uh, take care of the balance and all these things. Otherwise, uh, of course, other problems be created or something, and uh, your uh, Rotor is because it is heavy, and the speed is too high. So, वो आपको वो भी कर सकता है. आवाज़ आई थी इसकी. This video provides guidance for the safe use of centrifuges. It is intended to supplement the formal instruction provided in each institution and each laboratory. It is an old video. ओल्ड इंस्ट्रूमेंट लेकिन ये के जो उसके रूल्स एंड प्रिकॉशंस है वो ऑलमोस्ट सेम दिस वीडियो वाज नॉट अ सब्स्टिट्यूट फॉर अ सेफ्टी ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम व्हाट डज इट लुक लाइक व्हेन अ सेंट्रीफ्यूज रोटर फेल्स नॉट अ प्रीटी पिक्चर ऑल्दो पर्सनल इंजरी इज रेयर डैमेज टू वंस बजट कैन बी सीवियर Centrifuges are an important tool in the molecular biology lab and they deserve to be treated with respect. Mm -hmm. 
percent of centrifuge-related failures are user errors. Careless centrifugation can mean lost samples or damaged equipment. It can also present a risk to the user and the lab. Every time one uses a centrifuge, one makes a series of choices. Which centrifuge, which rotor, which tubes and adapters, what speed, for how long. These choices can be critical for both effectiveness and safety. Centrifuges are designed to use certain rotors. Rotors are designed to be run up to a maximum speed with a load of a specific weight. Exceeding those limits invites trouble. If you're unsure of the rotor or proper tube size, consult the manual. Ask an experienced colleague. Or call the manufacturer's representative. It's easy to take tubes for granted. But the correct fit of a tube in a rotor is crucial. Putting 600,000 G's on anything that's not a perfect fit is going to lead to grief. There's another important choice one makes when centrifuging. What level of containment is necessary? Always choose aerosol containment tubes and rotors when centrifuging infectious materials. and load and unload in a biological safety cabinet. Even when working with non-hazardous materials, every step is critical in preparing a centrifuge run. Before placing the rotor in the centrifuge, make sure the bowl is dry and the drive spindle is clean. Avoid overfilling of tubes or bottles. Remember, in tubes used in fixed angle rotors, centrifugal force drives the fluid up the outside tube wall. Check to make sure the rotor is seated on the drive hub correctly. Balancing is critical. Half a gram difference is nothing at 1G. But at 500,000 G's, it's 250 kilograms, and that's another story. Don't overload beyond the rotor's maximum mass without reducing the rated rotor speed. When using a horizontal rotor, make sure all buckets are hooked correctly and move freely. Check O-rings on containers and rotor for cracks, nicks, or chemical attack. And don't forget to apply vacuum grease to the seals at least weekly. The most common user errors are failure to secure the rotor to the drive, to put the lid on the rotor, and to secure it. Double check to make sure the rotor is not being run beyond its rated maximum. Yes, it may be a boring task, but it's good practice to stay at the centrifuge until it's running smoothly at the desired run speed. When the run is completed, don't open the door until the rotor has come to a halt. Always check for a possible spill, and if you find one, be sure to clean both centrifuge and rotor thoroughly. When working with infectious materials, wait 10 minutes before opening the door in order to avoid hazardous aerosols. If there's evidence of leakage or damage of any kind, close the lid immediately and carefully plan the cleanup. What all users of centrifuges fear most is rotor failure. Centrifuges and rotors are designed to withstand enormous forces but the integrity of rotors can be seriously compromised by corrosion or fatigue. 
In aluminum rotors, structural failure is most often caused by surface corrosion in the highly stressed areas of the rotor. Metal fatigue is an inevitable consequence of prolonged rotor use and will eventually cause any rotor to fail. Rotor failure doesn't have to happen if rotors are properly maintained and retired. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Here are some general guidelines. Keeping the equipment clean and dry is critical. Wash immediately if spillage occurs or if salts or other corrosive materials have been used. Avoid harsh detergents or bottle brushes with sharp wire ends, especially when cleaning aluminum rotors, which are more susceptible to corrosion. Finish rinsing with deionized water. Make a habit of inspecting rotors. If there are rough spots, pitting, white powder deposits, or heavy discoloration, don't run the rotor. Have it checked by the manufacturer's representative. Eventually, every rotor must be retired. And as ultra rotors age, their maximum speeds must be derated. That's why it's imperative to keep diligent logs. An unlocked ultra speed rotor is a ticking time bomb. Centrifugation isn't as simple as it appears. It requires careful use, careful maintenance, and careful bookkeeping. All the information needed is in the owner manuals or a phone call away. Find out. Don't let carelessness destroy your centrifuge. It may ruin your experiment, not to mention your day. Troubleshootings also, uh, those which uh, are um, uh, I mean, most of the time uh, you will find this uh, the list in the manual and you can correct yourself as well. But sometimes if you think that you cannot handle it, or you all, it, it is always recommended that you consult your senior colleague or your supervisor or the engineers. Okay, so this um, has its other hai or safety ka to measure sub. Uh, if you are working with the uh, infectious agents, so uh, the uh, risk become the, this man, uh, of course is multiplied. So yes, I is in this camera. So then I I try to make it very simple for you. Okay, uh, and um, you are not going to perform an experiment, of course. So um, that's why I have shown this video to you. It's not uh, difficult to work with uh, centrifugation because of course it is almost similar. Uh, as the normal centrifuge machines that you use in, uh, uh, almost daily, but uh, the difference is that you uh, have to uh, be very careful with it, and there are certain, of course, you have to uh, uh, make sure. Uh, if you have a cap of speed, you have to normal speed. If you have a speed, you have to do a little bit of speed, you have to do a little bit of time, you have to do a little bit of material, you have to do a little bit of safety. Experiments के साथ और equipments के साथ चीजें vary करती हैं पर general rules जो है वो same है ठीक है तो that was all about centrifugation अब आपका next जो है वो seven or five इंशाल्लाह doctor जल्दी 
स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी और रेडियो Okay. 